to Matt and Roy back again. Well, as you can see, this video is going to be about my Ion Tape 2 PC dual cassette deck. I've actually had a chance to use this for about a day now, and I must say I am more than a little disappointed with it. I guess the best thing I could say about this is it does what they say it will do. It just doesn't do it very well. So, what is it that I don't like about this? Well, for number one, the build quality. If you look here, you can see that it takes a really long time for the door on the cassette mechanism to open. Um, I think that's because they used very, very cheap gears and they did not lube them properly. As a matter of fact, if this is shut sometimes with a cassette in it, it won't actually open all the way at all. It'll just open about that much, and then I have to pull it down the rest of the way. Looking inside here, uh, you can see that the uh, tape head and the rollers are actually fairly well made. Um, this is not a auto-reverse uh, system on each of the decks, which is another one of my beefs, because you would think for a modern cassette player, you would at the very least have auto-reverse, especially since this is mainly designed for transferring uh, cassettes over to a digital format, and the program that it comes with does that automatically, so having the auto-reverse would be a huge plus. Uh, looking inside, this one was hardly ever used. I mean, you can see that the tape head on this, which is right there, is almost brand new. I mean, it is clean as can be. I, I still went through the um, act of cleaning it with uh, cotton swabs and uh, some alcohol, but nothing really came off. Neither did it on the pinch rollers or the cap stands either. I mean, all this is really pretty clean. And this that's the play deck. This is the record play deck, which has the same problems with the door. Um, same, pretty much same mechanism in there. Again, it was totally, totally clean. Uh, another problem that I have with this is the fact that this is not a computerized tape deck. They've had computerized tape mechanisms since the late 70s, early 80s, and this is just your standard manual cassette player. I mean, you can see when I hit the play button, it actually pu pushes up the uh, drive. So, it's not a necessity to have it computerized, but it definitely would make it easier, especially when it's down here, and i got to put a lot of pressure on there just to hit play, record, or you know, reverse, and fast forward. Another problem that I have with this is the fidelity. For some reason, and I'm not saying this is going to be on every deck, deck B sounds ten times better, I am not kidding here, than Deck A. Deck A has a lot of tape hiss, you can absolutely hear it through, you, doesn't matter if you're using the RCA jacks or the USB cable, you can hear it through it, uh, through both ports. Um, it also has a very, very low treble, a um, lot of bass, but very low treble. And I've tried again cleaning this, I even tried demagnetizing it, and it really did not make much of a difference at all. Tape B sounds infinitely better, so for the purposes of at least transferring tapes, I'll of course be using uh, Deck B over here. I'm going to go ahead and boot up the computer so I can quickly show you guys the software that is used for transferring your tapes. Uh, while that's booting up, I'll once again quickly go over the uh, different features on the front of this. Up here you have your old style manual tape counter and I believe that only works for deck B. I've not actually tried it with deck A but I believe it is only B because you would actually have to have two different belt and uh, systems to run that if it was going to uh, deck A. Uh, here you have your audio tape meter. It's only one. For some reason it's only one. Usually you'll see two LED rows. One for left channel, one for right channel. On this it's only one. Uh, you can see there on the left it says play a chromium tape, uh, dubbing, high speed dubbing, and record chromium, which incidentally is exactly the options you have to, to play your tape. So if you're putting a chromium tape, which you can tell it'll usually have a longer uh, punch out up here, usually go twice as long as that, and of course it'll actually say 
CRO2 most of the time on the cassette. So if you're playing one of those, you put your cassette in and you push this button and then play. That way it has the uh, right audio settings for those tapes. Dubbing, high speed dubbing, I think we all know what that means. And record chromium. So in this case, it doesn't automatically select between regular iron oxide, chromium, and metal tapes. You actually have to manually select that, which is kind of another stupid feature of this, if you ask me. Up here you have your record level. Eh, again, nothing super special. You do definitely want that. Have that right around the middle for most tapes. Of course, if you have an older tape and the levels are kind of low, you want to turn that up a little bit. And then your Dolby noise reduction. Again, I believe this is just Dolby B, not Dolby C. And that is pretty much it for the front of this. So I'm going to go ahead and do a demonstration of this, and we'll be back in just a moment. For the purposes of this demonstration, I am going to use a tape that uh, my aunt actually created with a friend of hers back in the 80s. Um, I think you guys will enjoy this. It's a Christian music tape, and uh, probably won't get me in trouble with the copyright police. Alright, so we'll go ahead and turn this on. Power button's right down there. Go ahead and open this up now in this case I'm actually going to use the B deck because like I said the A deck the fidelity is absolutely atrocious put the cassette in now we got to go ahead and open up the uh, program the program on this is called easy vinyl tape converter and as you can see it opens up right here it says welcome to the easy vinyl tape converter by ion audio uh, begin by connecting your audio device to your computer, which I did via the USB port. Go ahead and click Next. Now, as you can see right here, it's showing you the levels of the tape. Now, nothing's showing because I haven't pushed play yet. But what's interesting here is you can actually increase the gain. Again, if you have a cassette that is older and the levels are very low, you're going to want to go ahead and push that up. And since this cassette is old, I am going to push the gain up a little bit probably to about 2.8. Now, at this point, what you need to do is go ahead and hit play on your tape. And we'll go ahead and hit record. And if I turn on my receiver, we can actually hear what's going through it. You can see we have the record time and automatic. You can see that the levels are about a three quarters, so that's good. And that brings me to another thing I don't like about this cassette deck. I don't know if you guys could hear that, but it's very obviously off on the speed. It's not like that with every tape, but the older ones, it definitely, is, definitely does that. Um, if it's a newer tape, it plays fine. So what I'm doing right now, it's still recording. Uh, we got about a minute and 30 seconds on here. And I'm going to go ahead and actually stop it because that, that's good enough for this demonstration. So go ahead and click Next. And I'll go ahead and turn this off. And as you can see, it brings up another box here. And because I only did one track, of course, it's going to say Track 1. But it gives you an opportunity to put the artist, the album, and the track title information in. So I'm going to go ahead and do that and it'll go ahead and make the mp3 on the uh, computer okay once you've done that it gives you an option to do to record something else to open the save location or to close the vinyl tape converter in this case we're going to open up the save location and let me see real quick i believe it's saved it under album so i'm going to go ahead and open that up yep and as you can see, there's the track one, the very first track, which is the only one we did. 
I'm going to go ahead and play that real quick. We'll do it in VLC. Obviously, I had the gain turned up too much, but that's okay. It's a learning experience. You may have to do this once or twice to get it exactly right. And as you could obviously hear in that audio presentation, the speed is absolutely atrocious. So, coming to the end of this, would I recommend this cassette deck for anybody else? Absolutely not. Uh, at least in my case, this thing is a total piece of garbage. Uh, you are much better off just using a regular dual cassette deck, hooking it in through your imp sound inputs on your sound card, and using a program like Audacity. Um, how Ion even put a piece of junk out like this, I never know. It, it's definitely shameful because this thing, it, albeit, I, albeit that I got it used, it was not used much. I mean, this didn't even have a fingerprint on it, and like I said, looking at the cassette heads on here, they were like brand new. So, stay away from this product. I'm not saying all Ion products are bad, but in this case, this is definitely a no-no. Well, please remember to like and subscribe, and as always, have a blessed day, everybody.